There are definitely ways that we've known about since the beginning of the pandemic to decrease infection. And those are masks, distancing, avoiding crowds. To some extent, uh, some of the countries that had done lockdowns or kept other people from um, coming to the country on airplanes have, were successful uh, temporarily. Other things that we do reduce the manifestations of disease once you become infected, and that would be vaccination, which reduces the severity of, of disease and hospitalizations and death. And also we have medications that prevent people from progressing once they're infected from mild disease to much more severe disease. So as we look at impact, which is really what we need to focus on, we need to use the vaccines as, as best we can. We need to use boosters if those are indicated. And then we need to use uh, other methods, including mask distance and uh, avoiding crowds and hygiene in order to re reduce the total uh, infection burden uh, within a country. And, and those things are pretty much the same, a, a systematic approach to prevention, not only vaccines. Right. Uh, interestingly, you mentioned uh, that, of course, the latest variant uh, has come from southern Africa, where there is uh, a particularly low rate of vaccination in that part uh, of the world. Uh, obviously, that's something that the world needs to address and ensure equity and equality when it comes to the distribution of vaccines. But uh, once we do get the whole population up uh, to those 60, 70, 80 percent vaccination rates. A, my question is, will we get the world population uh, vaccinated at that level? And then B, what does it mean for the virus when we get to those levels? Yeah, and so you point out the, the two great inequities, the first inequity in the distribution of vaccines and the second and, and probably one that, that will continually surprise us badly. Uh, and that's the inequity in, in laboratory and testing. Um, you know, they don't do as many diagnostic tests in, in sub-Saharan Africa as they do in other parts of the world. They don't do as much sequencing of variants in, in Southern Africa as they do in other parts of the world. Now, we are lucky that South Africa had the capability and picked up the variant. That being said, you know, those two inequities hopefully will, be, will start to resolve over time. Certainly, the amount of vaccine that we're producing now, one and a half to two billion doses a year, lead the WHO to estimate that maybe by the middle to the later part of next year, 70% of the world's population could be vaccinated or at least have received the first dose of vaccine. It's really important to remember though that vaccines, although they do prevent infection to some extent, their primary use is to reduce the impact of infection if you happen to get infected after being vaccinated. And that's really important. At this point, we don't really understand how do you use vaccines to prevent transmission? And that's a key point and, and one of the key scientific points that we have to focus on in the next year.